Welcome to another video for chemistry. In this video we're going to be discussing the different types of redox reactions. So we have combination reactions, decomposition reactions, combustion reactions, and then finally displacement reactions. Displace displacement reactions break up into three different types of displacement reactions uh, which we'll discuss in a separate video. All right, so let's take a look at the combination reaction. Combination reaction is a reaction in which two or more substances combine to form a single product. Okay, so here I have an example of such a reaction. You'll notice on my reactant side I have sulfur and I have oxygen. So here are my two, my two elements that are going to eventually combine. So what will happen is, is that sulfur and oxygen will come together, a reaction will occur, and I produce a brand new compound, sulfur dioxide. Okay, so here's my general uh, chemical equation for that, sulfur plus oxygen. Oxygen is always found as O2, it's a diatomic molecule, of course, unless it's um, ozone, which is O3, but by and large, oxygen is n usually never found by itself. Uh, that, would, that would be called a free radical. So oxygen is always... Uh, for our purpose, you'll find it as O2. Okay, so here's my general equation for this type of reaction. You have element A combining with a separate element B. It will combine to form a brand new element AB. Okay, so this is a combination reaction. You have two separate elements combining. Something else to keep in mind is that this is a redox reaction, which means one of these elements will be reduced and the other element will be oxidized. And in this case, you have oxygen, which is the more electronegative element that will be reduced. It will be gaining the electrons. Try to imagine as sulfur and oxygen being two different people, sulfur being, uh, let's say, the average, your average human being, and then oxygen being a bodybuilder. The bonds that they make, which are made via the valence electrons of each element, are like a handshake. So as the bodybuilder and the average person shake hands, let's say both of them decided to pull, well, the bodybuilder who is stronger will pull the average man closer to him. So, likewise, oxygen, which is more electronegative, will have a stronger pull of those valence electrons. So those electrons, even though they're being shared, will be shared unevenly. And the oxygen or the electrons will spend most of their time with the oxygen, increasing the radii size. So that, 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 that valence shell those added electrons will increase the size of the radius um, of the oxygen. And you'll notice that with the sulfur, because they're losing electrons, uh, that radii will decrease. Okay, so sulfur is oxidized, it loses electrons, while oxygen is reduced, it gains electrons. Let's take a look at another example here. And take a look at the bottom where I have my red, my red square. Uh, here's a general equation once again. I have a single element combining with another single element to make a brand new compound. Okay, And in this case, the, my single element will be aluminum, and over here will be bromide. Okay, And you'll see that there's a reaction that will occur. All right, so aluminum and bromide will combine to make aluminum bromide, a brand new compound. Okay. In this case, the uh, accurate ratios will be two for every two aluminums, um, I will need six bromides, okay? Because the compound will be aluminum with three bromides combined together at its, uh, on its surrounding, okay? So aluminum and bromide will come together, a reaction will occur, and we will have aluminum bromide. So there's my brand new, my brand new compound. So let me go back. So here again, single, single elements, single... Um, entities, aluminum and then bromide, and then my combination reaction to make aluminum bromide. Now they're both bounded together. Now they're sharing electrons. And bromide, which is more electronegative, will unevenly share these electrons. Um, it will have them more, so it'll increase its radii size, whereas aluminum radii will uh, decrease. Okay? So bromide is reduced while aluminum is oxidized. All right. Okay, so let's take a look now at decomposition reactions. This is a breakdown of a compound into two or more components. If we compare it to our previous reaction, a combination reaction, you'll notice that on the reactant side, we start off with two 
separate elements. And then we have a reaction that occurs, and then those two separate elements combine to form a brand new compound. Well, in a decomposition reaction, it's the opposite. This time we start off with a compound. A reaction occurs, and then that compound separates into its constituent elements. Okay, let's take a look at an example of a reaction uh, where this takes place. Here you have mercury oxide. Mercury Hg combined with an oxygen atom. So we add energy to, these, to this combination, and we add so much energy to this combination that, uh, that they actually begin to separate. Okay, so now they're separating, they're decomposing into their constituent parts, right? And now oxygen will combine with another oxygen because, as, as you recall, oxygen uh, does not like to be by itself. It's a free radical. It likes to combine with other things to stabilize itself. And if nothing else is around, it'll just find another oxygen molecule, and you end up with a diatomic molecule, um, oxygen, O2. So O2 and hydrogen, and um, sorry, mercury are your final products. So again, on your reactant side, oxygen and mercury will combine, and then on the product side, oxygen and mercury are separated. Okay, so you'll see now a video here of this reaction actually taking place where you have mercury oxide, energy being added to it, and then a breakdown of mercury and oxygen. Okay, let's look at another example now of a decomposition reaction. So you just witnessed uh, a compound being separated, and this was done by adding energy to it. Let's look at another example where energy is having to be added again to separate a compound. Let's look at a compound that you're very familiar with, H2O, water. So you'll notice my chemical equation at the top that's, uh, that's squared in red. I have water molecule, a reaction. In this case, I'm going to uh, add electricity to this uh, compound, and you're going to notice, you're going to notice in this video that uh, there are bubbles that are coming off of those two pins. And the reason why there's bubbles coming off of those two pins, electricity is being run through those two pins, and as that electricity runs through the water, that energy that's running through the water is breaking up hydrogen and oxygen. So you have hydrogen and oxygen that are holding hands and then the electricity is causing them to break that bond. And then you have oxygen bubbles and hydrogen bubbles. And you know that they're hydrogen, you know one side is hydrogen and the other side's oxygen because if you notice the, um, if you notice the ratio of hydrogen to oxygen, it's a two to one ratio. For every two hydrogen atoms, there is one oxygen atom. So you'll notice that the volume of hydrogen will be double the volume of the oxygen that's collected in the test tube. Okay, so here's, the, uh, here's what the molecule would look like, H2O, the reaction, and you end up with separate H2 molecules and O2 molecules. And this is the, uh, this is the general equation for a decomposition reaction where you have AB, compound AB, a reaction occurs, in this case we added energy to it, and that was enough energy to break up A and break up B. And it just so happens that uh, element A and element B both uh, are usually diatomic molecules. They're found combined with another like molecule. All right, we're coming to a close now in this video. We've so far discussed combination reactions and decomposition reactions, and now we'll take a look at combustion reactions. This is a reaction in which a substance reacts with oxygen usually with the release of heat and light to produce a flame. Now the key to this is understanding that uh, oxygen is the, one of the primary elements that's used in this combustion reaction, okay? And it produces a flame. Just think anytime there's a flame, uh, fire, fire always feeds off of oxygen. The more oxygen there is, the more the flame will grow.
okay? Now, typically, uh, in these types of reactions, we have usually oxygen combining with some sort of uh, compound that has a, a long carbon uh, skeleton, okay? So usually carbon and hydrogen that's attached to this carbon chain will react with the oxygen, some reaction will occur, energy will be released, light, flames, heat, and all of these elements, all the carbons and the hydrogens will be rearranged and usually the byproduct or the product is carbon dioxide as carbon will rearrange itself from that carbon chain molecule with oxygen to make carbon dioxide and the hydrogens from the carbon chain molecule will reform to make water. Okay, and that will be the final product usually in a combustion reaction. This here what you see is uh, C3H8. This is propane. Okay, propane is a uh, commonly used fuel for um, for you know for uh, grills. Okay, for cooking meat, uh, cooking food in general. Uh, propane, butane, th those types of gases that you can purchase at a gas station or at a grocery store for your uh, home grill. Okay, and of course you need oxygen to fuel this flame. Okay, so you'll have uh, propane and five oxygen molecules or diatomic molecules, right? Because oxygen is always found um, in pairs. You'll have some flame, you'll have energy that's, that's added to this reaction, and then all of these elements will be rearranged and they will make the final product of carbon, three carbon dioxide molecules with four water molecules, H2O. Now you'll notice uh, the carbons that were once a part of that carbon chain are now a part of the carbon dioxides. And then the hydrogens that were a part of that carbon chain as well have now rearranged and now attached themselves to oxygen. So I, I remind you, so the carbons and the hydrogens will rearrange, they will react with the oxygen, and they will combine themselves with that oxygen to make a new product. And in this case, it's carbon dioxide and water. Now, uh, there's, a very, there's another classic example that uh, I'm about to use that you should be very familiar with from biology. Okay, cellular respiration. Do you remember this guy? So we have a glucose molecule, C6H12O6, with oxygen. Okay, so we breathe in oxygen all the time, and we also consume sugars from our breakfast, lunch, or dinner, snacks. And then our body uses that oxygen in the mitochondria, in the, in the body, to break up this carbon, this long carbon chain, glucose, right? So notice the carbons and all the hydrogens. Actually, I'm missing here the oxygens from uh, my glucose molecule. Um, but the main, ox the main oxygens that are used in this reaction are actually uh, these right here. Okay, so we'll keep that in mind there. All right, so our glucose molecule will be broken up through a, a, a process, glycolysis, right? And then goes into pyruvate and then your Krebs cycle to make ATP eventually. So this glucose molecule will be broken up in the face of oxygen, okay? So you have oxygen, and the energy that's used to break this up is found in the found in the uh, your metabolism, your glycolysis and Krebs cycle, all those enzymes that are part of the process. Now, of course, you don't have a major explosion like you do when you you know light up a grill. In fact, these the energy that's released in this process and your metabolism is a very controlled process. It's like a tiny billion little uh, explosions in your body that are occurring every time your body breaks down oxygen. In fact, the heat that's released from this reaction uh, is is actually heat. That's why you get hot when you're out there exercising. That's another reason why when you're exercising you're intaking a lot more oxygen because your body needs more oxygen to produce more ATP from glucose, right? And actually a lot of the heat's also produced from the ETC, the electron transport chain, but that's for another, that's another video that you can go back in biology and look at. So you have carbons, you have hydrogens, are reacting with the oxygens and of course I am left now with the byproduct of carbon dioxide and water. Six carbon dioxide molecules and six water molecules. So keep in mind a typical product of combustion reactions are going to be carbon dioxide and water. Okay, So that was combustion reactions and that does it for this video. We've discussed the three topics that I said we would and in the next one we will finish up with the different types of displacement reactions. Good luck in your studying.